Hey mamas, welcome back to the show. I am excited you are here with me today. Today we're going to have a fun little twist on how making pancakes is like leadership or how leadership is like making pancakes. Either way you look at it, I hope that you enjoy this episode. Let's go. Hey, mamas, you're listening to the Mom Squad Podcast, a space for moms in network marketing. I'm your host, Melissa Wheelahan. I'm a mom, educator, coach, and trainer. For the past 25 years, I have been a part of network marketing as a stay-at-home mom, a part-time working mom, a full-time working mom, and most recently as an empty nester. And I've learned a thing or two. Do you ever feel like you're trading family time for business time? Have you tried all the things and still don't feel like you're getting anywhere? Are you always wondering where your next customer will come from or feel like the hustle never ends? Are you wanting to lead others but you just don't know how? Well then you have come to the right place. I believe that the most impactful network marketers show up for their customers and team as their authentic, humble, and real self. So whether you're just starting on your network marketing journey, or you've been in network marketing for a while, or you just need to see things from a different lens, I'm here to help. I'm going to be teaching you how to level up your business through relationships, leadership, and impact. So grab a pen and paper and get comfy because it's about to get real, raw, and authentic. Are you ready? Let's stop the hustle and embrace the journey. Let's go. Okay, let's get going. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Happy Monday, everybody. I'm going to jump right in because I don't want to keep you on too long and I like to make these episodes nice and quick. But first, actually, before I get going, if you have not yet done a review of the show, please do. If you've not shared it, please share. And if you have not joined our Facebook group, make sure you join. All of the information is in the show notes and also... Uh, you can text the word mom squad to 949-203-9556 and stay up to date on everything there is to know about the mom squad and what's coming up for us. So let's dive in. Um, how many of you ever made pancakes before? I'm sure if you're a mom, you've probably made some pancakes. And when you make pancakes the first time, I want you to think back to the first time you made pancakes or maybe every time you make pancakes. When you get all the batter into the bowl and you pour it onto your hot griddle, sometimes your griddle might not be um, hot enough and the pancakes might not sizzle right away when you put the batter on there. Sometimes the shapes aren't right. You know, if you're trying to make perfect silver dollar shaped pancakes, you know, your pancakes might be really small or the batter might be too runny and come out really fast and then the pancake's too big and maybe they're sticky. Maybe you didn't put enough oil on your pan if you use oil. Maybe the batter's too clumpy. It needed to be mixed more. There's a lot of reasons why your first batch of pancakes don't normally come out right. And then by the time you've done your next batch of pancakes, Um, they usually look a little better and get a little bit more uniform. And that's because you then know how to make better pancakes. So you're bound to fail when you make pancakes. Let's just, we'll just put that out there. You're bound to fail when you make pancakes. And then if your pancakes don't come out right all the time, you might feel like an inadequate pancake maker. Like you might feel like I just can never make good pancakes. My kids are always going to have weird shaped, clumpy, dry pancakes, <laughs> right? But then what you realize is as you get better at making the pancakes, your confidence grows. Your confidence grows and you're like, hey, I can make a pancake. And you're like, hey, let's whip up pancakes for the morning, you guys. Who wants pancakes? You start to 
get your pancake game down, okay? Then you probably, if you're like me, when you, if you have little children or like when I had, my boys were small, I start to add things into the pancakes. So who wanted bananas? Bananas are my favorite. Or who wanted chocolate chip pancakes or blueberries? Um, maybe you even try to make little shapes. I had a friend that I saw uh, today, actually today on Facebook, where she made pancakes in the shape of little race cars. I don't know, like race car pancakes. There's all sorts of pancake, different molds you can do out there. I've seen Mickey Mouse shaped pancakes, dinosaur shaped pancakes. I mean, there's all sorts of shapes and things you can do. And so eventually you become a proficient pancake maker. But it takes some time to get to the point to where your pancakes are perfect. And you might need to go back and revisit your recipe. Maybe you feel so confident in your pancake making skills that you think I can make pancake batter from scratch. So then you start all over and then you relearn how to make better pancakes. Okay, (laughs) stay with me. I know what, Melissa, please tell us, what does this have to do with our leadership journey? This is a lot like a leadership journey. Most people don't come into their multi-level marketing or network marketing business ready to be a leader. Now, very Few and far between, I have found in my past 25 years, do people come in skilled to be a leader and ready to be a leader. You might have someone in your team that comes in and is ready to lead because they may have had experience leading in other places. Okay, that That's my story, right? I've led a lot of different places. I've promoted a lot of leaders. I've had good leadership training. And so I came into my current company ready to lead right? Ready to lead and ready to move forward. But that wasn't the very beginning. Most people end up as an accidental leader. Really, if you think about it, if you have somebody who's coming into your business who just has natural leadership abilities, they might have the skill set and the natural abilities to be a leader, but they might not understand how leading in a network marketing space works. Or They may be like, I know how to lead, but the people they're leading in this company are different than the people they led in the other company because the product is probably different and the people are different. So most people don't come in wanting to be a leader. Most people don't see themselves as a leader. Right now, um, as you're listening to this episode, we have completed a um, break breakthrough leadership group in our team, myself and my upline. And um, I'm recording this way before that's even started. But by the time you guys listen to this, that group will be over. And I think one of the challenges of getting people to be in that is that people don't often see themselves as leaders, right? They think I'm not a leader. I can't do all of that. So people don't see themselves as leaders. Um, But no matter how you come into this field, whether you come in As an accidental leader, whether you come in with experience leading teams somewhere else or you come in thinking, I want to do this and I want to lead, all things are the same. What I'm going to share with you today really is the same. I'm going to give you four things to think about when you are either moving into leadership, have become an accidental leader or are ready to move into leadership. So I'm going to give you four tips to help you get your leadership journey off and running so that your pancakes are not always messy and clumpy (laughs) and whatever else happens to your pancakes. Okay, the first thing is give grace. Here's the thing. You got to give yourself some grace. Don't worry about failing because you're going to fail. I mean, that is just the reality of it. You are going to fail. I did a, um, just this past week, I did a Vision 2023 for my team. Again, I'm recording this back way before you guys hear it, but I did a Vision 2023 and I told them where I saw, where we came from, like what our team had done this year, where I saw us going next year, what we were going to focus on. I spent a lot of time working on some goals for our team based in action And then I told them what they could expect from me because I want to be accountable to the people on my team. And I told them, I will fail. 
I will make mistakes. I will probably say something I shouldn't say, but you can know that I will always hold myself accountable for my mistakes and I will always serve you with love and grace because you're going to mess up. I've had lots of leaders in my 25 years that I have helped branch off and to be their own leader and lead their own teams. And I always say to them, you're going to fail. It's not always the easiest being the leader because you're going to you're gonna have times where you make people mad. You can't make everybody happy all the time. So just give yourself some grace. Don't worry about failing because failing is an opportunity to grow. And when you fail, you want to reflect back and say, how could I do it differently next time? Okay, that's the first one. Second, leverage your upline. So if you are um, a new leader, and you're thinking, I'm with my upline and I'm ready to break off and do my own thing. I really want to encourage you to have a plan with your upline and then think of the things that you can leverage them for as you move on, okay? So thinking about um, your upline has been there, they're running a team, they have the knowledge, they have the systems, they have the experience, You may have that from another company, but thinking about the company you're with now could be different than the company you were with before. So really leveraging your upline. If you are an upline and you are a leader who is getting ready to help leaders move on, it's important that you give them a plan. It's important that you understand that our whole goal as a leader is to move people up and out. And that doesn't mean kicking them out of the nest before they're ready. It means growing leaders so that your business can multiply, right? If you're not growing leaders, you need to be thinking about how you can do that. So when you're a newer leader, use your upline. The third is focus on one thing at a time. And it kind of ties into number two a little bit because you can't do everything. Um, you can't do everything when you're a new leader, because you're taking on more responsibilities. So if you are just a person selling your product, so for example, I'm in boutique sales. So as a affiliate, I, if I'm primarily focusing just on customers, I'm focusing on my customers. Maybe I'm doing some vendor events. Maybe I'm doing some online parties. Um, I'm probably talking to people outside of social media. I'm really just promoting my clothes. Once I move into a team, whether that's accidental or intentional, getting a team, um, I now have all these other things that come with being a leader, which is why I find some people get disappointed really quickly and then shut down and like, oh, I can't do that because they haven't been set up for success. So focusing on one thing at a time because you're going to take on a lot more responsibility when you choose to move into leadership, which is super fulfilling and great, but you got to have a plan. So focus on one thing. Think about this. I want you to think about this. When I was um, prior to social selling, I did, you know, most of the companies I did were home-based parties. Um, Pre, right? I mean, pretty much pre-pandemic. I mean, I feel like we had some social selling pre-pandemic, but really social selling has really come a long way in a, a, a short amount a short amount of time. So previously, especially with like my first company where I had um, grew a lot of leaders, um, those people who showed promise or who were ready to move into leadership, like we had a conversation, they're like, I'm ready. I'm like, hey, let's focus on one thing. So back then we had uh, in-person team meetings. So we'd all gather at my house and we would do a team meeting. We'd have some food, we'd do some training, we do recognition. And so I would incorporate those leaders to do some of those things, some training, some recognition, and then they would eventually be able to take on a little bit more responsibility. And then they were ready to do their own meetings and break off and do their own thing. It's even the same now. So think about in social selling, I have, you know, social selling, how you can help leaders do one thing at a time to give them a little bit of taste of what leadership really looks like and hold them accountable from the beginning. So on my team, I have a lot of people who have teammates, but not everybody is ready to be a leader. So I have about eight or nine ladies who are actively leading their teams and they all help with training. 
like that's just we the month the end of the month we're like what do we want to do next week everybody takes on something of what they're good at or what they want to do I have one girl who loves to do graphics so she does graphics for everybody um some of them have come up with their own team names all of them have their own first line chats so they have their own team chat where they can really create relationships and build trust in those chats so that when they do break off people know who they are and they're comfortable with them so think about the one thing you can add if just figuring out how to do recognition for your team is all you can do, do that. If just having a chat for your team to build community is it, do that. Do one thing at a time because as somebody who has been a leader who's been supported to move off onto my own and then now been a leader supporting people to move off on their own, I can tell you that the much easier way to do it is to do one thing at a time so that you're not overwhelmed with all the things. Okay, so that's really important, focusing on one thing at a time. The last is once you're ready to go, 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 just go, just go. I know it might be hard. There might be hard feelings on both sides. Like, you know, as leaders have broken off for me over the years, I'm kind of a little sad because I'm like, oh, man, I really miss that person and those teams and the camaraderie. And then I'm like, but that just makes space for new people. And. I know that as leaders move on, they're moving on with a solid footing and they're ready to go. So once you're ready to go, go, go for it. You don't have to have everything in place. You can have some things in place and then back to number two, leveraging your upline. Um, I have leaders who are on their, I've had leaders in the past and I have one now who's on their own um, and they leverage the training through our team because they're not yet ready to do all of that. So and I do the same with my upline. My upline, um, I leverage her training. So it's less training that my team has to think about because we collaborate together and do those things. Um, we do a lot of things together. So, but that doesn't mean that I have to have everything together in order to move off. Once you're ready to go, go, but make sure you have a plan. Here's what I want to also say. People who are watching. I have a, a coworker in my professional career who always says, People will remember how you came in and how you left. And I think that's very true in our field also. People will remember how you came in and they are going to remember how you leave. So if you come in and you are, you know, trails, trails a blazing and you are, you're a runner and you are ready to go and you build this team, people are going to see that. And then you leave and you just leave and you just drop everything and you don't do anything forward people are going to remember that people are watching they're watching you as a leader they're watching what you're doing they're really watching what you're not doing and so my advice to you is that when you're ready to leave make sure that you have the things you the basic things you need in place ready to go and know that people are watching then once you're there you can add all the extras right? Just like with our pancakes, you're going to add in some chocolate or some fruit or make little shapes or make your homemade batter. As you move on to your own, you're going to add in things. Our team, I'm constantly reflecting for our team as a leader. We're constantly adding new things, trying new things. We're never a finished product. We are constantly looking at what are we doing? How can we do it better? How can we get more people involved? How can we make things duplicatable and look easy so that people want to be a leader. So let's recap. First, give yourself grace. Don't worry about failing. Second, leverage your upline. Take them, like utilize their experience and their knowledge and their systems. Third, focus on one thing at a time, just one little thing at a time. Master that and move to the next. And then four, once you're ready to go and lead on your own, go. Just go. Go for it. I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. I would love to hear from any of you if you want to reach out and have any questions or need any feedback or help. Uh, just reach out to me on, on Facebook, Melissa Wheelahan, or you can reach out through the show notes um, at the bottom. And everybody have a great week. Get out there, be brave, be bold, and be beautiful, everybody. Bye. Hey, mamas, did you enjoy that episode? I hope so. Who do you know that needs to hear this information? One of the ways you can show your love for the Mom Squad is by subscribing, reviewing, and sharing. 
And don't forget to take a screenshot of the podcast and post it on your favorite social media platform and tag me at Melissa Wheelahan. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next week.